Good morning, everybody. I have some time to kill here before my day of work gets started, so I thought I'd give everybody an update as to what's going on with the GTO. If you saw the last short video I made, I have low oil pressure and couldn't figure out what's going on, so I had asked um, you guys if you had any ideas and suggestions, and many of you have stepped up with some comments and some ideas, and thank you all very much for those. Uh, they've given me a lot to think about, to the point now where I have too many theories going on as to what could be happening uh, with the engine. I've actually taken the time now to go online and find diagrams that show the entire oil circuit for an LS engine so I understand now how the oil is actually flowing through the block and getting to where it ultimately needs to go. A lot of people did say the oil pump and I'm, I still contend that to be the leading theory. In fact, I called Melling on it. Uh, I had to call him a couple of times before I was finally able to speak to somebody in their tech department. And I told him which pump I was running and what engine and the pressure I was getting. And the first question he asked me is, okay, what are your clearances on the mains and on the rod bearings? I didn't know. I just assumed everything was roughly stock because it was just a, basically a stock rebuild on the bottom end with some new rods and pistons. But I called my engine builder and they said they did open the tolerances up. On the mains, they opened the tolerances up to one and a half thousandths, and on the rods, they opened the tolerances up to two and a half thousandths, which is a little bigger than stock, but still within the acceptable range that GM sets for bearing clearance. And even after hearing that, the guy from Melling had said, well, that's still within the median range, doesn't explain why your pressure's low, sounds like you just need a higher volume oil pump. You need to go to the 10296, to which I said, well, I could, but my builder said that because I'm only running the factory pan and it only holds five and a half quarts, that I could end up sucking the uh, pan dry with a high volume pump on high RPM. And he said, oh no, that's a myth. So I, I kind of get the impression that the guy from Melling was just trying to say, oh, it's not our pump that's causing your problem, which fair enough, you don't want to criticize your company's own product, but I think he just didn't want to say, oh, it's the pump. Other people made suggestions that it could be the barbell thing, the thing that you slide back into the block through that main galley on the bottom driver's side of the block. It's supposed to direct oil down to the uh, oil filter. If on a rear sump LS motor, it would go straight into the oil filter through the filter and then back up through a vertical passage in the block and the barbell then directs when the oil comes back up from the oil filter back up vertically through the block. Now on an LS, because it's a front sump, it gets directed down into this transfer piping that's in the oil pan itself. One pipe takes it to the front, to the oil filter, then it comes back out of the oil filter, goes back up the other pipe, then goes up the block. And some people said, well, you could upgrade the barbell. There's a couple companies that make a billet metal barbell. That could, that could help. I, I think how that could help is it's supposed to seal the passage off so you never have unfiltered oil getting past it and then into the engine. So it's more to make sure all your oil is filtered. I don't really think it would affect pressure that much. It, it, it could if it was leaking really badly, but I don't think that's the case. So I could change that. I might change that. It, 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 it depends, and I'll explain that in a bit. Someone else suggested I need to remove the oil filter bypass valve. Removing that wouldn't help my problem because... If anything, that's making sure that you have pressure in the motor. If the pressure in the oil filter ever got too high because there's too much crud built up into it, the pressure at the block would drop if that bypass valve was removed. So I will not remove the bypass valve because if anything, it makes sure you have pressure in the block. Someone else has suggested, and this could be a thing, um, that my gasket on my cam retainer plate could be bad and I could have pressure bleeding off there. Uh, which could be because I didn't buy a new cam retainer plate when I put the new cam in. I reused the cam retainer plate I bought with the first cam. The seal still felt good. It still felt like it had spring in it, but it could be bad. I, I have to concede that. There's not much else in the oil system that could be bleeding off pressure like that. The tolerances on the bearings for the main and the rods are a little more open, but... I don't think they're open enough to the point where I would lose that much pressure. So the main theory still is that it's the pump. But then I started researching online information about oil. If it, how, how thin would it get if it got so hot? Because unfortunately, the one 
bit of information I do not have is oil temperature. I don't know how hot the oil is actually getting. I only know how hot the coolant temp was getting. So what I did is I called up AMSOIL and I started talking to them about it and I told them my, the problems I was having and they said, well, you could uh, try running thicker weight oils and see if that helps. In fact, my engine builder also said the same thing. He said, well, we opened those tolerances up. You should really run a 1040 or a 2050 once the motor's broken in. The only problem with that is I put in these Lunati link bar lifters and they are their street performance version of the lifters. And when you buy them on their website, it says specifically that they recommend you don't use an oil with a viscosity greater than 10W30 because anything over 30 weight and the lifters won't function properly because the oil passages on them are so small that if you get too thick an oil in there, you can't get oil through them properly. So I called up Lunati and I asked them, what oil can I run? And they said, you could get away with 40 weight, but don't go past that. If it's a really good synthetic 40, that will that will flow, but anything past that and you will see problems with those lifters not getting proper lubrication. Knowing that now, I the, the highest I can go is a 40 weight. So as another measure just to see what would happen, uh, the next time I'm home and I can work on the car, I'm gonna put 10W40 in it. Um, and Amsoil has suggested if, if I start doing that, I should start running their Z-Rod oil with the, um, with the extra zinc in it because even if the pressure does remain a little low and I don't end up changing anything, the zinc will provide a lot better protection uh, for the engine. And they're probably right. And to be fair, I don't know why I haven't been using Amsoil for the past few years, because I'm from Wisconsin, it's made in Wisconsin, and I know it's a good product. So I probably should start using Amsoil. Uh, so I probably will once I get this problem sorted out. So the next step's gonna be change it out to a synthetic 1040 see what happens with the pressure um, at idle. They told me at, at Amsoil that a 1040 to work properly needs to operate at about 220 degrees, which seems a little high, but a thicker oil does need to get hotter. So hopefully that will help and I will see more pressure at idle. If I can get to at least 20 pounds at idle, I will feel much better. And I really need to see 50 pounds over 5,000 RPM. And I really wanna see 60 pounds over 6,000 RPM. There's a there's a general rule of thumb when it comes to LS motors. You wanna see about 10 pounds of pressure per thousand RPM. Um, so if I can get 60 at 6,000, that's about where I'm supposed to be. If I'm, if I'm 50 or lower at 6,000 RPM, uh, it's still gonna be a problem and I would still be concerned that I'm gonna have issues. Now, if I put the heavier oil in there and it still doesn't make a difference, then I know I'm gonna have to start changing parts. And if I'm gonna have to start changing parts, I'm not gonna mess around. I'm probably just gonna change everything, which means rip the engine back out of the car because it's gonna be that much easier to work on. I'll end up changing the pump. I'll change the pickup tube. I'll, I'll probably, maybe I'll change that barbell. I don't think I'll, I won't block that oil filter bypass, but I'll just, and, and definitely the cam retainer plate, I'll change all of that. And I'm also gonna have to change the rear engine cover. Another thing I didn't mention is when I went to put the pan back on, one of the long thin bolts that in the back of the pan that goes up into the uh, rear engine cover was uh, stripping out. And you only have to put nine foot pounds of torque on it and I couldn't even get that much and it, was, and it just kept turning. So one of the holes in my rear engine cover is now stripped. So I'm gonna have to change the rear engine cover as well. So that is the situation. Um, again, I don't know when I'm gonna get back and be able to have time to work on it. Possibly Memorial Day weekend, possibly. All the suggestions have kind of given me a little bit of inspiration to really dig into this thing and figure out what's going on with it. So thank you for your suggestions and your support and your encouragement too. Hopefully heavier oil helps. If it doesn't, well, the next step will be to tear the whole thing apart again. Uh, but I will figure it out. And uh, when I figure it out, you'll find out uh, what the problem was. So uh, keep watching. Uh, truck episode soon. I've now got some good ideas for what I'm going to put in that. So uh, look for that soon. See you later.